Ever feel like your mind is a battleground? You're not alone. This is a sentiment shared by many, often in hushed whispers, hidden behind smiles. We're talking about mental health, a subject that, despite its vital importance, is often shrouded in mystery and misconception. In our world today, mental health issues are prevalent, cutting across age, gender, and social status. They are real, they are common, and most importantly, they are not signs of personal failure or weakness. They are simply part of the human experience, a testament to our complex and often unpredictable minds. So if you've been wrestling with your own mental health, remember it's not your fault. It doesn't define your worth. It's merely a challenge, one that countless others are grappling with too. And here's the good news. There are ways to manage these challenges. There are strategies, tools, and resources that can help. It's time to learn about some strategies to manage these challenges. Firstly, let's talk about radical acceptance. This is a concept that can feel daunting, but it's actually quite liberating. Radical acceptance is about acknowledging your mental health challenges head on instead of running from them or brushing them under the rug. It's about looking your struggles in the eye and saying, I see you, I accept you, and I will work with you. It's about understanding that these challenges are a part of your journey, not a detour. Why is this so important? Because denial only feeds into the cycle of guilt, shame, and frustration. It keeps you stuck in a loop of why me and what's wrong with me. But when you accept, when you truly acknowledge what you're going through, you can start to break free from this cycle. You can start to redirect your energy towards healing rather than hiding. Remember, acceptance is the first step towards healing. Uh, now let's discuss the power of connection. In the journey of managing mental health issues, connection plays a pivotal role. It's not just about the occasional chat, it's about establishing a bond with those who truly understand your struggles. This could be a professional therapist who guides you through the maze or a peer support group where you find solace in shared experiences. These connections offer more than just an empathetic ear. They provide validation, a confirmation that your feelings are real and they matter. This transformative power of understanding can be a beacon in the darkest times. It's a reminder that you're not alone, not in your pain, not in your fight. Connection is a lifeline, a tether to stability. It's a bridge between isolation and community, despair and hope, silence and expression. So reach out, seek support, connect, because sometimes the strength we need is in the power of togetherness. Remember, it's okay to lean on others. Next, we will address the role of medication. When we talk about mental health, medication often becomes a topic of debate. It's surrounded by a cloud of stigma and misunderstanding. But let's get one thing straight. Just as an individual with a physical ailment might need medication, the same goes for those battling mental health issues. It's as valid and as important. The brain, just like any other organ, can experience difficulties that require medical treatment. Antidepressants, mood stabilizers, antipsychotics, or anxiety medications can be just as life-saving as insulin for a diabetic or an inhaler for someone with asthma, and that's okay. Of course, medication isn't the only answer, and it's not always the right answer for everyone, but it's one of the many tools available to help manage mental health struggles. No one should feel ashamed for needing or using that tool. Medication can be a crucial part of the healing process. Now, let's talk about the importance of self-care. In the hustle and bustle of life, it's easy to forget to take care of ourselves, but self-care is not a luxury. It's a necessity, especially when it comes to maintaining mental health. It's like refueling a car. You can't expect to keep going without stopping for fuel. Self-care looks different for everyone. It could be reading a book, taking a walk, or even just sitting quietly for a few minutes. The key is to do something that helps you relax and recharge. And here's an important point. Self-care needs to be scheduled and prioritized. It's not something you do when you have spare time. It's something you make time for. It's a priority, not a luxury. So carve out some time for yourself each day, no matter how busy you are. And remember, it's not selfish to take care of yourself. You can't pour from an empty cup. Remember, self-care isn't selfish, it's essential. Now let's explore the power of mindful breathing. Marvel at the simplicity yet effectiveness of this tool. 
Mindful breathing. It may sound trivial, but it's a technique that has been utilized for centuries to enhance emotional regulation and reduce anxiety symptoms. So, how does it work? Well, it's all about focusing on your breath, observing it as it flows in and out of your body without trying to change it. This simple act of bringing your attention to your breath can have profound effects. It helps to ground you in the present moment, pushing aside stress and anxiety that often stem from dwelling on past regrets or future worries. Mindful breathing acts as an anchor, a steady point amidst life's storms, helping you to navigate emotional turbulence with a calm and composed mind. So when you're feeling overwhelmed or anxious, remember this simple technique. Pause, take a moment, and just breathe. Remember, breathe in calm, breathe out chaos. Next, let's tackle the stigma surrounding mental health conversations. It's no secret that talking about mental health can feel like navigating a minefield. The hushed tones, the sidelong glances, the almost palpable discomfort. For too long, we've been conditioned to treat mental health discussions as taboo, something to be swept under the carpet. But it's time, my friends, to pull back the rug and let the conversation flow. Engaging in open dialogue about mental health is a potent tool in eradicating the stigma. It's about normalizing the conversation, making it as everyday as discussing the weather or the latest sports scores. It's about understanding that it's okay not to be okay, and that admitting to struggling isn't a sign of weakness but rather one of immense strength. When we talk about mental health, we're not just clearing the air. We're also fostering understanding, empathy, and compassion. We're showing others that they are not alone in their struggles, that there's a whole community out there ready and willing to lend their support. We're creating a safe space where people can express their feelings without fear of judgment or ridicule. But it's not just about talking. It's about listening too. Listening to others' experiences, their struggles, their triumphs, it's about learning from them, drawing strength from their resilience, and offering them our support in return. It's about creating a two-way street where empathy and understanding flow freely. Breaking the stigma surrounding mental health isn't an overnight process. It's a journey, one that we all need to embark on together. It's about standing tall, speaking out, and encouraging others to do the same. It's about creating a world where mental health is treated with the same respect and seriousness as physical health. And remember, every conversation you start, every story you share, every time you lend an understanding ear, you're not just helping yourself. You're also helping others who might be struggling in silence. You're showing them that it's okay to reach out, to seek help, to talk about what they're going through. Your voice can be a beacon of hope for others. So let's start the conversation today, and together, we can break down the walls of stigma surrounding mental health. Finally, remember you matter. You're not just a speck in the universe, but a unique, irreplaceable individual who makes a difference, big or small, in this world. And that's a fact, not a feel-good slogan. It's the truth that empowers you to face your mental health challenges with courage and determination. When we talk about mental health, we often overlook one crucial aspect, self-worth. It's easy to get caught up in the whirlwind of self-doubt and forget that your value doesn't diminish because of the challenges you face. You are not defined by your struggles, but rather by the strength you exhibit in overcoming them. And here's the thing, seeking help isn't a sign of weakness. It's a testament to your resilience. It's an act of courage to acknowledge that you're struggling and need support. It's an affirmation of your worth, a declaration that you matter enough to take care of yourself. Let's debunk the myth that asking for help is a sign of surrender. It's not. It's an act of victory, a step towards reclaiming your mental well-being. Remember, you're not alone. There are people out there who care, who want to help, and who understand what you're going through. Don't hesitate to reach out to them, seeking professional help, talking to friends or family, joining a support group, these are all signs of strength, not weakness. Let's flip the narrative. Instead of viewing mental health struggles as a battle to be fought alone, see them as a journey to be navigated with the support and understanding of others. This shift in perspective can make a world of difference. So let this be your mantra. I matter. I am worthy. I deserve support. Repeat it to yourself every day. Write it down. Internalize it. Because it's not just a statement, it's a fundamental truth. Your well-being is important, and you deserve support. 
Never forget that you matter today and every day. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. And most importantly, please share your thoughts and comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. Thanks again and may God bless you with more power and prosperity.